Hello and welcome to this video. In this one, I'm going to show you how you can create this car destruction simulation in Blender. So I'm going to show you this method step by step so you can follow along and hopefully create something similar yourself. And real quick before we get started, I posted a one hour mini course on my Patreon in which I use this method to create this VFX shot right here. So if you want to see the full workflow of how I apply the method from this video, go ahead and check that out. And uh, yeah, let's get started. I'm going to use this Volvo model right here from this user on Sketchfab. You can use any car you want. I'm using a Volvo because it's a Swedish brand, so that's cool. So just download whichever model you want to use as a GLB file. And in a new empty blend file, we're gonna go file, import, and import GLB, and just find that model. Then we're just gonna join everything to one object and clear the parenting here. Then deselect that and delete all of these empties that come with the download. To clean this up a little bit, I'm going to merge by distance here. See that deleted a lot of unnecessary geometry. Now we have this weird shading going on. So we're going to fix that in the attributes tab here. going to delete this sharp face and the custom normal. And then just shade auto smooth. And that seems to fix that. So we're going to go ahead and separate this car into the different parts that we need so obviously the wheels need to be their separate objects so we can simulate those driving and i'm also going to separate the car doors and the hood right here so in edit mode i'm just gonna select this face here and then i'm gonna use the material select here get those shift select that and there we have our wheels then i'm gonna tab into edit mode here and just separate it like this now those are separate objects Bring back the car. I'm going to try to select the doors here. I'm also going to separate this uh, bumper here, actually, because I want that to be able to fall off as well. Okay, that looks about right. So we have our doors separated, our wheels, and also some additional parts here. Maybe that took away too much, but we'll roll with it. And yeah, that looks good. So let's select everything. Apply all transformations and then also make sure the rotation here is set to XYZ Euler here as uh, normal. So just copy that to selected. Then set the origin to center of surface. And now if we give all of these an active rigid body, we're going to see something like this take place, which is good. It's uh, moving. But now we need to use some uh, constraints to uh, put all of these pieces together. So I'm going to start by focusing only on the car and the wheels here. I'm actually going to remove the rigid bodies here for now and hide those. We have our body and our wheels here. Then I'm going to select the wheels, shift select the body of the car, then go to rigid body connect. This adds in four constraints and we can set the location to selected. And that puts the constraints at the wheels here. And to keep everything organized, I'm going to move this to a collection and call that Wheel Constraints. This will take care of the damping and everything. So I'm going to set this to Generic Spring. Copy to Selected. Before we do anything else, let's just add in a plane here. Give that a passive rigid body. Select this Wheel Constraints again. Enable Linear Limits here and set all of those to zero. And then we have to go through and copy to Selected like this. Now they're stuck on the car but they're still rotating. But we want to limit the rotation to only the x-axis. So I'm going to constrain the rest of the two here. And there we go. And now to give it a little bit of damping like this, we're going to set the linear Z upper limit to 0.1 and the lower limit to negative 0.1. And copy to select it. I was going to sink down like this. Then to have it spring up again, we're going to enable the linear spring. And I think something like 1000 on the stiffness and 500 on the damping is going to work good. And if we increase the mass of the car here, we're going to see it a little bit better. So now we have a car that's rolling. That's a great first step. I'm going to hide the wheel constraints. And now to have the wheels actually drive forward, we're going to create a new set of constraints. So read body connect. And we'll put this in a collection called Motor Constraints. Set it to Motor. Enable Angular. And increase the target velocity and the impulse here a little bit. And now it's actually driving forward like this. Let's hide those motor constraints and work on constraining the rest of the car pieces. So we're going to do the doors here. So rigid body connect. And 
then we're gonna move these constraints to the hinge position. That looks about right. We'll create a new collection called hinge constraints and set these to generic. Oh, and we need to give these rigid bodies again. There we go. We're gonna limit the linear transform here to zero. So now it's like a point constraint. And then we're gonna set the X and Y axis to zero as well on the rotation to create a hinge. And here you'll notice this issue where the doors collide with each other and sort of, maybe it's hard to see, but they're sort of colliding with each other on the first frames here. The best way I've found to disable that collision is to create a new constraint between these and we have the option to disable collisions. So we can have it unenabled, but still disabling the collision and that issue gets fixed. And we can move these to a collection called disabler constraints because all these do is disabling the collision between these two doors and these two doors for this one and now that the car collides with something along its path the doors can sort of swing open like this but obviously we don't want them to swing into the car like so so what i'm gonna do is on this side i think we'll need to set this one to 90 degrees Yep, that's the right way, so it can go outwards 90 degrees this way, but it can't go into the car. And obviously on the other side here, we'll need to do the opposite. So this will be zero and lower will be minus 90. Okay, perfect. Here we can do a really cool thing. Instead of having the doors swing on this hinge right from the start of the simulation, we can create a new set of constraints here that will be fixed and breakable with a low threshold value here and we can move these to a collection and call that fix constraints and what that does is it keeps the doors locked shut before it sort of impacts something if we add in a really heavy cube here that will sort of drop on the car we'll see that the doors sort of swing open from this force so then the fixed constraints will be broken and they're going to be free to swing on that hinge. So that's a little bit more realistic than having the doors be wide open from the start. And you can see this door, for example, didn't, didn't get hit uh, hard enough, so it's still closed like that. Okay, perfect. I'm going to do the exact same thing for the rest of the pieces and we'll sort of speed through that. And you can see for the bumper here, I just put uh, the constraint at this side here. So it's going to rotate like so. And I also gave it a little bit more play here with the um, angular limits. So it can sort of pivot a little bit uh, on all axes here. All right. So with all of these constraints added, we're left with this result right here. So all of the pieces stay intact before it's getting hit. Then when we break those uh, constraints, things start to fall off a little bit. All right, so that's basically our rigid body simulation setup. And everything will be physically simulated like this. So you get some really believable motion. Now let's start working on this actual um, crash simulation. And here it's a good idea to duplicate this whole uh, blend file. If you want to be able to use this same setup for another project, for example. So yeah, just duplicate your blend file from here and keep that as a backup. And uh, the car will just keep uh, driving like this until it hits something. So we can dial in the speed here by changing the target velocity. And now it's going to go a little bit faster. And now to have it crash, we can just add in a passive rigid body as an obstacle here and play the animation. And it's going to simulate. So I want it to... And uh, this will obviously take a little bit of uh, trial and error to get right. But uh, if you're anything like me, that's sort of a fun part of the project. So that's not a big issue. Oh, and you can see it keeps driving away after the crash like this. Because the wheels keep uh, on being driven by these motors. And that could be a cool effect, but I want it to come to a halt after the crash. So to do that, we're going to animate the motor constraints to disable at the point of the crash basically. So I'm gonna add in a keyframe here, skip ahead and keyframe it as disabled, then 
control L to link animation data. So that will link this animation to all of the constraints. And uh, now it's just a matter of tweaking this animation and maybe adding in additional obstacles or anything that you like really. And yeah, I think we got the animation right here. We're gonna go to the rigid body world here and bake that. And then select all of our um, car parts here and go to object animation bake action and just select all of these and hit OK. Now you can see we get a lot of keyframes and we can remove the rigid body world. So now none of these have rigid bodies and the animation or the simulation is locked in. Since everything is baked to keyframes, we can delete all of our constraints and everything should still look the same. All right, so let's start working on the deformation of the car here on the impact zones. And we're gonna do this using soft bodies. So I'm gonna grab all of the car pieces here and move those to a new collection, call that car sim. Then we're actually gonna duplicate everything except for the wheels here, hide everything else and merge that into one object here. Well, this will be our deform object and you can see it's still following that same animation since we joined all of the pieces to the body of the car. So it's got all of these keyframes as well. Let's keep the car simulation hidden and give this a remesh modifier. And here we want the density of the geometry to look something like this. You can go a little bit higher like so. And if your computer is a little bit weaker, you can go lower as well. But I'm going to keep it somewhere around here and just apply that. Now to get the deformation in a realistic way, we're going to make this one a soft body. So it's sort of trying to follow the simulation, but it's lagging behind a little bit. And you can also see it's sort of simulating something here. But we need to dial in some settings here to get this metal deformation effect. So I'm just going to show you the settings that worked uh, good for me and then you can sort of play around with them uh, yourself to dial it in in uh, your scene. So first off under the goal settings here we're going to increase these values to 0.8 and that will have it follow the animation a little bit more uh, precise. Then we're going to increase the plasticity to max and also the bending so that's 110 right there and to better see what's going on here we can give this collider here a collision modifier and just scale that up a little bit so it's gonna collide with it oh and we need to increase the damping on the goal here to max as well that gives us something like this where it uh, deforms and sort of stays in that place like a metal object. So you can see there's the crumple zone, like so, and it remains in that shape, which is pretty cool. And get these really nice uh, shapes in the metal here. Let's also enable collision for the ground floor and set the uh, friction to zero. And I think that looks really good. Make sure the soft body simulation follows the original one uh, quite closely for the deformation to work later on, but it looks like it does. Let's just set the end frame of the cache here to 500 and then bake that soft body simulation as well. Now to apply this deformation from the soft body to the animated pieces here, we're gonna use the surface deform modifier. So set the target to our deform object with the soft body simulation and just hit bind on frame one and if we skip ahead a little bit we can see the deformation has been transferred to this solid object here and uh, this might be quite subtle but uh, sometimes we get a little bit of uh, shading issues here that's because our auto smooth uh, modifier here is below the surface deform so we're gonna unpin that and move it above our surface deform modifier that fixes that a little bit. Now we need to add this surface deform modifier to all of our car pieces. So let's just select everything, then select our body with the surface deform modifier and just hit Control L and copy modifier. So now all of the pieces have this uh, surface deform modifier and now we just need to unbind and bind everything again. And you could probably ask uh, ChatGPT to make a script for this as well, to, to do that a little bit faster, but I'm just gonna do it by hand. So now everything is uh, correctly bound 
to this uh, soft body that we made. And if we play the animation, we're gonna see everything is uh, deforming like so. And here we might want to lower the strength on the wheels, as those shouldn't really deform that much, I don't think. And we get something that looks like uh, this. I'm just gonna quickly add in a camera here and animate that so we can preview the simulation a little bit better. All right, that's looking good. Now uh, let's work on the final touch on this simulation, which is the glass on the car shattering. So I don't want the whole window to shatter. I just want the circle in the middle here to shatter. So we have some uh, glass shards left uh, at the edges. So in edit mode, I'm just gonna select our window here, subdivide that, and then deselect the edges here. Then I'm gonna hit P and separate by selection. So now we have these two parts of the window where we can shatter this one and we'll have some uh, glass left on the edges here. And here we need to go back and rebind these pieces as well since the vertex count has changed but now we can select this front glass here go to the frame where we want it to break then hit object quick effects and quick explode and here in this little window that we see pop up we want to disable fade now that we play it back we're gonna see it breaks into these little pieces here. So what this uh, quick explode uh, command does is it adds two modifiers or uh, rather one particle system and one explode modifier. And in the particle tab here, we can change the settings of this. So for example, I want 500 uh, glass shards. We get these smaller pieces. I want them to have a longer lifetime so they don't just despawn. I also want them to inherit the object velocity. That doesn't work for some reason. This will just do it manually by using these uh, coordinate velocities here. We can have it shoot forward like so and uh, maybe give it some randomness. That's a little bit too much. If we want to, we can also give this uh, body here a collision modifier so that the glass pieces can collide with it. But that will be a little bit more heavy to uh, actually calculate. And I want to increase the damping here and Give it some friction as well. I'm gonna enable rotation and randomize it so the pieces aren't uh, all aligned. Let's also give the floor some damping and friction and then we can bake this particle simulation right here. And now we have this window breaking effect. So I'm just gonna do that uh, exact same thing for the back windows here when it collides like so and uh, then we should be done. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you decide to follow along with this tutorial and run into any issues, feel free to leave a comment and I'll try to help you to the extent that I can through uh, YouTube comments. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. And again, if you want to see a full one hour breakdown video of how I apply this method to create this visual effects shot, that's available on my Patreon. So yeah, take a look at that if you're interested and I'll see you in the next one.